In our next lesson on the regulation of mammalian fuel metabolism from chapter 19, we want to look at the function of certain organs in terms of the metabolic pathways that operate under different conditions. Let's look first at our central processing plant, the liver. We'll examine it first in the fed state. Plenty of fuel coming in, it will store glucose as glycogen, but remember there's only so much storage space. Any excess glucose or amino acids are catabolized to acetyl-CoA. That acetyl-CoA is then used to synthesize fatty acids, and of course that's converted to triacylglycerols. These are therefore sent to other tissues and also to adipocytes for storage. In the fasted state, that is with no fuel coming in, the liver will first break down glycogen to glucose and send that to other tissues. It can also break down triacylglycerols to produce acetyl-CoA and that can be used in ketogenesis to make ketone bodies. Other cells can use this, but more importantly the brain. Amino acids can be broken down and remember they can be converted to either glucose or ketone bodies by the liver and sent to other cells that are in need of fuel. There are certain processes that operate and function in the liver, whether they, it's in the fed or fasted state. It's just a normal part of metabolism. This includes processing lactate and alanine that are produced by the muscles, and we'll see how this cycle operates in the next lesson. It also disposes of amine groups through the re urea cycle. Let's look next at the muscle. First let's look at the fed state. It will take up glucose, it will use a certain amount and store the rest as glycogen, but remember it only has a limited storage space. In the starved state, and that's highlighted in blue here, remember this is where there's no fuel coming in, all the glycogen stores have been used, it will break down its own tissue, break down protein to amino acids, and the liver can use these to generate glucose that the muscle can therefore use. In an active state where the muscle is being actively used, it will break down glycogen for glycolysis and that leads to the rapid production of ATP. In order to produce ATP rapidly through glycolysis, it's going to reduce pyruvate to lactate. Pyruvate can also be transaminated to form alanine. Lactate and alanine are then sent to the liver for processing and we'll see how that process works in the next lesson. Fatty acids or ketone bodies can be broken down to acetyl-CoA. The heart muscle is special in that it uses fatty acids as its primary fuel. For this reason the heart is rich in mitochondria. Remember that's the site of beta oxidation. For a muscle like the heart that must work continuously without fail, it's important that it has a, have a very rich energy source and so it's very logical that it would use fatty acids as its primary fuel. Let's look at adipocytes next in the fed state. So there's excess fuel, it takes up glucose and that gets converted to glycerol so that we have a backbone to form triacylglycerols. Fatty acids are taken up and combined with glycerol to make triacylglycerols and of course that's our primary storage form for lipids. They're stored as fat globules. In the fasted state, adipocytes will mobilize fatty acids by hydrolyzing the triacylglycerols and releasing the fatty acids into circulation. The kidneys not only eliminate waste, but they also help to maintain pH balance. One way in which they do this is by deaminating glutamine to form alpha-ketoglutarate, and that it, those amine groups can be used to adjust the pH balance. The alpha-ketoglutarate can be used by the kidneys in gluconeogenesis to produce glucose, so only the liver and the kidney can carry out gluconeogenesis. It might seem odd at first that the kidneys can do this, but remember glutamine is one of our highest concentrations of amino acids, so a ready source of amine groups, the kidneys will process a lot of glutamine, produce a lot of alpha-ketoglutarate, and so it makes sense to use that and convert that to glucose 
rather than simply eliminate it as a waste product. In our next video lesson, we want to see how organs communicate in terms of the metabolic pathways they stimulate in each other as part of a larger metabolic circuit.